No matter how fit you are, getting on a bike can be a challenge. Uphill, cyclists can set the pace by mastering a few mental tricks and strategic riding techniques that allow them to break away from the pack. It's really tactical and not a big thing to do. It takes a lot of effort, and as history has shown, hardworking tasks are done only by great people. Hence, there are only a few cyclists who are considered to be the best climbers. And today, we're all set to reveal the names of the top 5 climbers only on cycling right now. And yes, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Let's watch out! On number 5 is Lucien van Impe, 1968-1987. Many people consider van Impe to be the best climber who ever lived. You can expect Van Impe to compete for the number one spot on every list, even though the debate over who is the greatest climber will go on forever. The Belgian had an outstanding career. He competed in the Tour de France 15 times, with an astounding 8 times spent placing in the top 5 of the overall standings. Although he did win the Tour on one occasion, this is not the accomplishment for which he is best known. He is famous for having won the King of the Mountains jersey an incredible 6 times during his career. Van Impe was a climber who excelled solely in the mountains, and his name is forever linked in the history of cycling to the polka dot jersey. There are numerous stunning photographs that capture Van Impe riding out of his saddle in a manner that is uniquely his own. Van Impe would frequently attempt to gain time on his competitors by attacking mountaintop finishers. He competed against both Eddie Merckx and Bernard Hinnell, and had it not been for their superiority in individual time trials, he would have won more than one Tour de France. He was the most deserving person to win the King of the Mountains competition because he was the greatest climber of his period. His one victory at the overall level of the Tour de France, six victories at the Mountains Jersey level of the Tour de France, two victories at the Mountains Jersey level of the Giro d'Italia, and 11 victories at the stage level of the Grand Tours. Number 4. Alberto Contador, 2003-2017 selection has drawn controversy, but Alberto Contador is the only rider in the past 20 years who has been able to pedal like he is dancing. Even on the most treacherous inclines, Spaniard displays an incredible acceleration and turn of speed. He is truly unique among climbers of the post-Armstrong era in that he is the only great climber. His victory at the Tour de France in 2007 was a turning point in his career, and he went on to become the best rider in the world in the years that followed. By the time 2008 came to a close, Contador had joined an elite group of riders who had triumphed in all three of cycling's most prestigious competitions. He was only 25 years old. With a resounding victory at the Tour de France in 2009, he demonstrated once and for all that he was the best. Contador was able to easily dispatch Armstrong, who had returned to the sport as a formidable opponent. With a brilliant attack six kilometers away from the summit finish of the 15th Alpine stage, Contador showed the peloton who was in charge and won the stage. Despite the fact that Contador has not yet returned to the form he exhibited in 2009, he has demonstrated his obvious talent by winning the Vuelta twice. In recent years, new competitors like Chris Froome and Nairo Quintana have emerged. However, all of these riders are aware that, on his day, Alberto Contador is capable of leaving them in the dust. Even though he is not as dominant as he once was, Contador's approach to the mountains still demonstrates an odd that is unparalleled. Alberto Contador has two overall victories at Tour de France, two overall victories at the Giro d'Italia, three overall victories at the Vuelta a España, two combination classification victories at the Vuelta a España, and eight stage victories at the Grand Tours. Number three, Gino Bartali, 1935-1954. Gino Bartali is commonly regarded as one of the first brilliant climbers to ever live. When I was thinking of people to include in this list, he was the first person that came to mind. Choosing between the great Italian rivals, Fausto Coppi and Gino Bartali was what proved to be the most difficult task. The Second World War disrupted Bartali's career, but he's also remembered for the heroic efforts he made while serving his country during the conflict. During the years 1935 to 1940, Bartali was unbeatable in the Giro, taking home the overall title twice and the mountain jersey five times. After the war, he won two more mountain classification races for the Giro, bringing his total to a record seven victories. In 1940, Coppi established himself as a formidable adversary, and two of them engage in thrilling duels on some of Italy's most treacherous roads. Coppi was able to edge out Bartali on multiple occasions, but the Tuscan continued to climb brilliantly throughout the race. Bartali was successful outside of Italy, claiming victory twice in the Tour de France. 
In the 1948 Tour de France, he accomplished something that has never been done before. He won three consecutive mountain stages in a row. Bartali was a tenacious and unrelenting rider who served as an example for many other great Italian climbers, including Claudio Giappucci and Marco Pantani. Two victories of Bartali at the Tour de France overall, two victories at the Tour de France Mountains jersey, three victories at the Giro d'Italia overall, six victories at the Giro d'Italia Mountains jersey, and 29 victories at the Grand Tour stages. Number 2. Luis Herrera 1981-1992 Luis Herrera was a rider who simply cherished the opportunity to ascend. In 1984, competed as an amateur and dominated the slopes of the Tour de France, which left everyone around him impressed. Luis Herrera launched an assault on Alpe de Hughes, while many notable athletes were watching, and he completely obliterated his competition. It came as a huge surprise when a Colombian, who was relatively unknown at the time, managed to upset the French giants competing in the race. The following year, Herrera competed in the Tour de France once more and won another two stages, demonstrating his superior climbing ability once more. Herrera was only the second man in history to accomplish this task, and he did so by capturing all of the Grand Tour mountain jerseys between the years 1985 and 1989. In 1987, he became the first South American to win the Vuelta outright and in the process made history. Even though Herrera's professional career was brief in comparison to others, he will be remembered as a man who conquered the mountains and came up on top had the ability to push through the pain barrier and conquer even the most challenging of inclines, which is a characteristic that is shared by all great mountaineers. Herrera's achievements include two victories for the Tour de France mountain jersey, one victory for the Giro d'Italia mountain jersey, one victory for the Vuelta a España overall jersey, and two victories for the Vuelta a España mountain jersey. He also won eight Grand Tour stages. Our top climber is Federico Bahamontes, 1953-1965. Perhaps second only to Vantani's Il Pirata, the Eagle of Toledo is considered to be the most iconic nickname in all of professional cycling. This name is associated with Federico Bahamontes, who is widely regarded as one of the best climbers in history and has won numerous awards. He was yet another climber who served as a source of motivation and enthusiasm for people of subsequent generations. Bahamontes, along with Van Impe, is the first rider to complete a clean sweep of the Grand Tour climbers' classifications. Bahamontes also won the mountain's jersey on six separate occasions during the Tour de France. He defeated legends like Charlie Gaulle and Jacques Anquetil to win the Tour de France in 1959. Jacques Anquetil and Charlie Gaulle were his opponents. The Spaniard elevated the act of climbing to the level of an art form and frequently rode at his own pace, paying little attention to the competition that was going on around him. It's possible that his flamboyance has been celebrated more at the end of his career, and he's remembered fondly as one of the greatest cyclists in the history of the sport. Federico's achievements include one victory in the Tour de France, six victories for the mountain jersey at the Tour de France, one victory for the mountain jersey at the Giro d'Italia, two victories for the mountain jersey at the Vuelta a España, and 11 victories on stages of the Grand Tours. So, crazy cycling fans, tell us in the comments who is your favorite climber, and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more exciting videos.